How do you do, folks? Welcome to my channel. The name of this poem is Girl in a Bottle. On the garden path walks alone a girl. Each step makes apparent her slender grace. She stops where the cool fountain waters swirl with a tranquil look on her lovely face. She disrobes and bathes in the crystal pool with never a thought that there lurks nearby a sorcerer with the face of a ghoul and her perfect image is in his eye. With the carefree air of a do it play, she turns up her face to the cloudless sky and the crystal drops of the fountain spray to touch her soft skin seems to always vie. Rivulets of water cascading down through the downy cover between her thighs are clothing her form with a glowing gown, mesmerizing hearts, paralyzing eyes. The sorcerer sees with the heart of lust a body that shines like the very sun. Each breath she draws raises her shapely bust. He knows he is seeing a special one. The fountain was wetting her full sweet lips. The water curved in a miniature stream where it flowed from her waist over her hips and was channeled in through a place of dreams. The water that flows down her long wet hair makes the most perfect form of waterfall. The fine spray that touches and fogs the air makes a rainbow's arc that encloses all. The girl's own handmaiden comes down the path. The sorcerer knows it is time to go. The girl is preparing to end her bath where the fountain's water begins to flow. The handmaiden rounds the green leafy hedge just to see her mistress fading from sight. In the glow surrounding the fountain's edge, some powerful force now subdues the light. The girl then steps out of the flower spray, picks up her towel and begins to dry. Something seems so strange in the waning day, but all seems in place to her roving eye. Each flagstone appears in its normal place, as does every petal on every rose. The same sun shines down on her own same face, and she feels not a hint of the breeze that blows. The dim twilight falls and the sun goes down. Across the valley, all green with the crops, she lifts her eyes toward the distant town. Her eyes open wide and the towel drops. A wilderness lies where the valley lay, and she looks in the distance all around. The garden itself where the songbirds play and sing their songs is still filled with their sound. But there at the edge of her garden's grass, so clear that at first it cannot be seen as a wall made of clearest curving glass that's completely and absolutely clean. She runs to the wall till she has to stop. She feels the wall, it is no illusion. Her garden is moved to a mountaintop. Her mind is filled with extreme confusion. A sound from behind, now her senses probe. She spins around quickly and there beholds the sorcerer, garbed in a long white robe, a star and half moon on the wand he holds. With lust in his eyes and lips in a sneer, he looks at her nude body, head to toe. She knows that she's nude and feels some fear. She looks around, but there's no place to go. Before she can shield herself from his eyes, he puts out his hands and he cups her breasts. She flings his hands from her as she defies his brazen advances, which she detests. Slowly he raises his skinny white arm and he points at a spot far above her head. The girl looks up with a greater alarm and listens to everything that he said. That thing you see is the cart far above that fastens you here in your bottle home. When you vow to me your eternal love, I will take the cart from your glass stendone. 
The sun comes up on another day, and the captain girl must assess in you if she will discover a secret way, escape, and go back to the life she knew. Now she's corked under a bottle's dome with gardens of roses to fill her time, but no way to leave her transparent home with roses of yellow and red and lime. Though she has the beauty of every rose to carry her through each long day and night, the dream of her freedom breaks her repose and dampens what might have been her delight. She's captured without the power to leave and enter the wide world that looms outside. As each bird soars freely, it makes her grieve, and she often thinks of the time she's cried. Those on the outside can see her within, bathed in the flowers, incomparable scent, separated from all her friends and kin, like a captive bird with her spirit spent. She looks at the freedom outside her wall where a wild bird sings from her leafy perch and sends out the clearest and sweetest call from her spot on a bough of breeze-swept perch. She looks out one day on an errant night with his armor all shiny in the sun and his coat of arms carries a hawk in flight. He rides up the path on a black mane to dun. The strange coat of arms on his mirrored shield shows the hawk with an olive branch borne high, while his other talons a sword does wield as he soars aloft in the mirrored sky. The dragon that guards where the bottle's kept raises slavering jaws and soot-stained head, and the mountain trembled each time he stepped, and even the trees bowed themselves in dread. The girl in the bottle turned pale with fear as the flame from the dragon's feeded breath set the grasses smoking in places near, and the air was heavy with smells of death. The night comes to the path that scales a peak as the dragon watching lashes his tail. The night watches one moment looking peak and turning retreats down the stony trail. With a billow of fire to speed the night, the dragon turns back to his bed of stone. Mary's hopeful eyes lose their gleam of light, and she cannot restrain a hopeless groan. While starting to swivel away her eyes, she sees the night stop at the flowing stream. He soaks his bedroll as the dragon lies, watching what passes in the sun's last beam. Wet bedding soon covers the horse's head, which comes up the path at a rapid run. The dragon he meets near its stony bed, while a cloud of smoke covers up the sun. The breeze dissipating the smoky cloud lets the girl look on with a failing heart. The night lies in the path, no longer proud, and the dragon slumps, his chest cut apart. The sorcerer comes in a puff of light with a magical sword in his right hand, and raises the sword with a great delight, but a thrashing tail knocks him to the sand. In death's final throes, the sorcerer groans. As each groan sounds, he loses a feature. The whole glass wavers and the bottle moans, and the mountain howls like a living creature. Each image changes into blurs and waves, and far more indistinct each one becomes. Mirages and deserts, phantoms and caves, times passed from nightmares, and distance from drums. The girl falling into a coma deep has her garden merged with the mountain breeze. The world for that moment fell fast asleep while the very air has a sense of ease. From her fountain spray bath, the girl steps out. Her handmaiden dries off her dripping back. On the fountain's edge, she looks all about and watches the sun dry each barefoot track. She seems in some strange world of deja vu, like awakening from some midday nap, with a sense of loss assailing her too, as though something once gained now left a gap. 
A dull lassitude and desire for sleep sends her to the room where her bed is kept, and this time her sleep was so sound and deep that she never knew how she dreamed and wept. Awakening from sleep with an empty heart and melancholy but knowing not why, she seeks her garden and walking apart, recalling her strange dream, she starts to cry. Vaguely she knows she has faced great danger. Fresh in her mind is the thought of a knight, given his life, though only a stranger, riding to death when he first saw her plight. Seating herself in front of her fountain, she looks across the valley toward town and saw a flash from there near the mountain where the path crosses a creek that comes down. The bee's drowsy buzz is hypnotizing, trying to lull her into a deep sleep. The flower scent is so appetizing, yet her pleasures are never very deep. Something gnaws at her heart with growing pain, emotion she has never before known. The flash from before she now sees again how much closer and larger it has grown. Each flash seems as bright as the noonday sun. They prevent her eyes a more direct view. She looks at her roses and one by one she delights at every shade and hue. She looks down again on an errant knight with his armor all shiny in the sun. His coat of arms carries a hawk in flight. He rides up the path on a black mane to dun. The strange coat of arms on his mirrored shield shows a hawk with an olive branch borne high, while his other talons a sword does wield as he soars aloft in the mirrored sky. I hope you enjoyed this little saga. Come back to see me. Goodbye.